Welcome to Matthew's Digital. My name is Aaron, and today we are going to continue our discussion on TAFJ development. Last time I showed you how you can transition from TAFC development to TAFJ development, still maintaining your JBC program. Now, for members, you already know how to do TAFJ development just using Java alone, without using InfoBasic. And if you want to become a member of this channel, it is very simple. Now, if you're watching this video, you can already become a member. It's very simple. From any video watch page or from our channel page, which is uh, Mathis Digital, you click on this button. Join. This window will open. There are three levels. You need to choose a level depending on the benefits you want to enjoy as a member of this channel. Now, the first level is contributor. These are people who value the knowledge they get or the contribution we are making. So if really you see the benefits of uh, this channel, and you want to become a member, to be part of people who contribute to the professional life of others, then please join this channel. If you believe in the values of sharing knowledge, please join our channel. By joining as a contributor, you are doing two things. One, you are going to enjoy the benefits of accessing member-only contents. We have videos which are reserved just for members. And secondly, you'll be supporting this channel because we'll be able to make more videos and distribute to more people. Now, if you want to capitalize and want to have more benefits, you can opt for shout-out member or big fan. If you are a shout-out member, you have extra benefits. You can suggest the content you want to see on this channel. You can also have access to my social media accounts. So in my free time, I always answer to the queries of people who contact me on the emails, on WhatsApp. So you have access to me and I can assist you in my free time. Now, if you're a big fan, you have an extra benefit you can get even more benefits because you can get discounts on our coaching programs in the one of courses up to 30 percent this is a lot so feel free to choose whichever level if you just want to support our channel and you want to be part of people who are making a difference in the lives of other professionals please click here or become shout out member or big fan the only thing to do is click on join to put your payment details and click buy the rest is just to enjoy the benefits thank you now let's move to our topic of today terminus unit test framework before we talk about unit test framework of terminus what is unit test? From Wikipedia, we read that unit tests are typically automated tests written and run by software developers to ensure that a section of an application, also known as unit, meets its design and behaves as intended. So now, a unit in a T24 terminology is going to be a subroutine. In other words, the unit test frameworks will allow us to test if a particular routine behaves in the way it's supposed to behave and is producing the results it's supposed to produce. Now let's see how to do that. You remember that last time we wrote this subroutine and this subroutine receives account number and returns account details. 
But the way it returns account details is a JSON object. So out of this data, account details will produce a JSON object. Now this program, which we wrote last time, calls that subroutine multiple times in this loop. So it reads a saved list, loop through that list and calls this subroutine and produce at the end a JSON array. Now remember, the unit test tests only a unit. In our case, we are, going to, we are not going to test this program. The tests we are going to write are for this subroutine. How to do that? From here, remember this uh, structure has been generated automatically. We just need to right click a new T24 component folder structure. Okay, but you can create it manually if you are not using Design Studio. Now, our unit tests are going to be reside here. Since we have only one subroutine, we are going to have only one unit test program. From here, you do right click, new, this one, select this one, T24 routine component test case, because we need test case. Now we need to select create unit test, and you need to give it a name. Now a subroutine is called get account details. So the proper name should be like test get SCT details. This is what we want to do. We want to test get account details. Click finish. A new file is created automatically with extension .tut. It's not .b. So if you are creating it manually, you make sure that the extension is tut, not dot b, because it's not a subroutine. Now, this will generate a lot of stuff, but I like to make my unit test simple. And let me simplify this. I'm going to get rid of these uh, comments. There are a lot of comments here. Basically, this is going to be simple. I don't need any label. And I can delete everything. You see here? Up to return. Actually, we have a, already have a return. Okay. So I can delete everything. Let's start small. Okay. Now. What is a target? A target should be the name of the routine. Which routine are we testing? Let's go back to our definition. It's going to be the full name of our subroutine, which means we grab the package name dot the name of the method. This one and this is going to be our target because this is what we want to test we want to test this subroutine we don't need uh, the keyword package here in our test case okay so keep it like this and let's have a descriptive uh, description the description this is going to be displayed when you run this test so this is very important that you capture uh, a message which describes what your subroutine, what you are testing. So we are saying this is um, unit test to get uh, account details in a JSON object. Okay. This reflects uh, what our subroutine does. And this is what we want to test. Now, if you look at our subroutine, it relies on, let me close this by the way, it relies on account record. So, which means we need somehow to get account record. 
but the unit test does not touch the database so you can safely whatever you do is just to set the testing data actually this program we not call t24 database which means we can form a dummy record let's do that let's define the id of course because this does not have to be in t24 database you can invent something like this this is going to be the account id then we need also to define the record because we are going to rely on the record let's do that quickly let's initialize that as an empty now this does not have to be a complete account record we can just grab the data which we need for instance we need only this three so let's insert because we're going to use this account opening package for us to access these properties now let's give values dummy values to these fields we haven't said that short title let's say john smith again does not have to be in the database the same as uh, this uh, id because this is a dummy record and the currency let's say usd and the balance we can give it even a string we can define it in the form of a string let's say this much let's assume this is going to be the balance or some more figures okay now we have our record what we need to do we need to set a record to a testing record for that we need to use uh, the method called set record so we do utf dot set record now as you can see it expects the table this has to be a valid a table in t24 in our case we're dealing with account so it's going to be f dot account and the second parameter is the id of the record and the third is the record itself so with this we have a testing record again which is not database this is not going to be saved in database so, so you don't have to worry it's not going to touch your t24 database now we have the record which we are going to test now remember our subroutine has two parameters two parameters which is account id and details as a return parameter so which means we need to add those parameters to our subroutine before we run the test before we call it so for that we use another method so the utf and the name of the method is add parameter the first parameter we need to add is the id of the account so it's going to add this id and the second one should be the return parameter or the return value we can name it how we want let's name it details And since we have all the ingredients now, everything is ready, we can run the test. How do you run test? We call a method called run test. Now this receives an optional argument of as a description. We already have the description here, so there's no need to set a new description. So we can do this. 
Now, if you have been working with any testing framework, you know that you need to assert the value because it is going to be run automatically. There is no need of uh, checking manually what it returned. Now, how do we do that? Any testing framework has different methods which you can do to assert uh, if the value matches the expected one. Now, we need to know what to expect. Now, if you remember what, what our subroutine produces, actually, let's uh, run this program again. If you don't remember, So account list is ACCT.list. This program loop through a list of uh, accounts and produces different objects now as one JSON array, which means our subroutine just produces individual JSON objects, something like this. Okay. And we need to make sure that. When you run test, we should expect something similar, right? So in our case, we should expect the ID to be this. The name to be this, John Smith. The currency is USD. And the balance, we should not have any double quotes around should just be the amount like this okay this is what we should expect now how do we verify automatically how do we tell the system to verify that this is what we get for that we use another method so utf dot assert now, if you do assert, we can assert if it contains some value or if it is equals. Let's use equals, which means we, ne we need to have a full match. We are going to say this return, we are going to assert if this return value matches this. We can have this as a, a variable or we can put it here. Let's have this as a variable. We say expected, for instance. Because now this is a string, let's put quote around. And you can say these details matches the expected value. Okay? Just like this. So our program is ready. The rest is to run. How do you run this? You can do right click run as basic unit test. Congratulations, as you can see, success. So there's zero failure. One test was run successfully and the result is success. So you're going to see this in the green. And if you expand, you can see everything. So basically, this is our actual value and this is the expected they match now if you were to change just small thing on our subroutine to produce different result this will fail for instance you see the balance the, no double quotes when it comes to the balance now if we say we want to have double quotes for instance around the balance. If someone changes our subroutine, for instance, we do this and then let's save. If you run our test, they are going to fail now because our subroutine is going to produce different result. And we, let's let test again run. You see, it failed. And basically, you can even see here, there's an error. It says this test failed because 
this does not match this so expecting a result without double quotation on the amount this is what we expect but we go it with double quote around so this is powerful in a sense if someone changes the subroutine or if you accidentally change the subroutine it will fail now let's not do that let's keep our subroutine the way it should be and we run again our unit test all right so no errors and everything is okay congratulations so we have covered a very important topic today because unit test is very important especially in case you have continuous integration in your organization so i hope you have enjoyed watching this video you now know how to write unit tests there are some other concepts which we did not touch like stubs because we didn't need them so you can continue expanding on this i feel necessary to just cover what we need so if you have enjoyed watching this video please like it and make sure to share the same with your friends if you have not yet become a member of this channel you can click on join button and start enjoying more benefits as a member of the channel thank you see you next bye bye